Hey, this is Andrew from Project 86, and you're listening to the Vulgar Display of Podcasts. to the vulgar display of podcast you got the mox here live from the barn studio we got dale and anthony what's up fellas how's it going hey, buddy guys. what's up what up got a special guest online right now we got mr andrew schwab like the company yeah like the finances <laughs> from project 86 man we are so happy to have you on air today thanks for joining us oh the pleasure's all mine gentlemen thanks for thanks for taking the time to have me we have a mutual friend that you might not be aware of Ooh. Mr. Matt Ooh, my- Matt Putnam down there in Arkansas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Name drop. Oh, Mr. That's a great, Matt. Yeah. Huh? That's a great reaction. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's what we were yeah. looking for. <laughs> well, let's just say we work very closely together. <laughs> well, he wants us to ask you about the pitch pipe. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Are you ready for a story? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So really and this will kind of check a lot of boxes probably in terms of discussing the making of the new record or the process of writing the music perfect so really went heavy on collaboration for this release really wanted to be intentional about crafting a specific sound something that was darker more ominous heavier than anything that we had done before and had a vision for this and matt was so instrumental in and is still so instrumental in in bringing this whole thing together both from a collaboration and from a production standpoint so we've been working really closely together the last two years basically on all this music and i know matt uh going way back we actually toured together uh over 20 years ago when he was playing percussion for the band living sacrifice great man Mm -hmm. and We had a tour that was us, them, and this band Stavesacre. And of all the guys that were hanging out and, and being buds on that tour, I hung out with Matt the most. So he and I just had a, a kind of, a, we hit it off and kind of had a, a good good friendship. And we actually knew each other from even before that. His old band, Esoteris, with uh, Arthur from Living Sacrifice and his brother Corey, who fronts the band Norma Jean. Right. Uh, th- their band, Esso Karras, played with us at a show in like 99 or 98 uh, and met those dudes then and hung out. So we, we've known each other for a really long time, get along really well, but we never worked on anything together. So in working on this new material, I actually flew to Arkansas a couple of different times, more than a couple, I think. I think three or four times between recording and writing and pre-production. Uh, and Matt was kind of, we would meet up with Matt at his studio, Electric Nebraska, to do a lot of the writing and to do a lot of the pre-production. And the first time we were working together, uh, I discovered that Matt is one of the funniest people that I've ever met. I, the guy is just a clown. He's, he's just, and I don't mean a clown like he's always goofing off. I mean a clown like he has just this timing mm-hmm. with just certain things he does. Like he is all business. And then he'll just break the seriousness of the of the room with just hilarity. And so he has this little <laughs> pitch pipe next to him on his console, on his desk. And it's really small. I think it's made out of plastic. And it's more like a kazoo than like a serious <laughs> musical yeah. anything, right? So we'd be sitting there, be working on some ideas, and then all of a sudden he'd just blow the pitch pipe out of nowhere, and the whole room would just start laughing. (laughs) And (laughs) as silly as that little quote-unquote instrument was, it actually made it onto track one 
uh, which is called Apotheosis of Omni Part One. Really? And you can actually kind of hear it going along with the acoustic guitar. Yeah, he's a mad scientist, so you never know what's going to get used in a song. He's the guy that will record a refrigerator and turn it into a loop that plays a pivotal <laughs> role yeah. in some piece of music, you know, or or you know, you never know what's what's going going to make it into the song. With that song, actually he took a voice memo that I made of like a drum part, this really weird random drum part that becomes the drums for the song. Oh, very cool. Uh, so <laughs> he literally just programmed out drums according to my beatboxing, embarrassing <laughs> voice memo. So he's super fun to work with. Great dude, great friend. Uh, love him to death. Super talented, super creative, but also extremely funny. Mm -hmm. right. And so the pitch pipe that was a total joke actually made it into the song apotheosis which is track one on army part one again and you can hear it going along with the acoustic guitar that goes it's just that simple line that's building that goes da -na -na, da -na -na, da -na -na. it kind of comes in about 30 seconds into the song if you listen closely very cool that's yeah. great so from what started out as a joke now is the on the very first song of the album yep exactly Okay, so we have to ask you about this one as well. I mean, he just gave us a list of things that we're going to run down. <laughs> so, so he's passively interviewing me. Right? Yes, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> we're mi we're middlemen for Matt. Yeah. Matt. I guess you could perfect. You mm -hmm. could have just called him, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. recorded it and sent it to us. <laughs> it's so awesome and so Matt. <laughs> but so, uh, and we found him funny as heck. Yeah, as, as yeah. Be too when we interviewed him. You know, a lot of times on these interviews, you don't know what you're getting especially we're all in the same room here mm -hmm. and then whoever we're interviewing a lot of times they're on the phone so we're like you know the timing might be off or whatever right. so yeah when we when we talked with matt it felt like just talking to a buddy and we've yeah, some great. friends mm -hmm. uh but he wants to bring up uh hnl can you tell us about hnl yeah. hnl is a, an arkansas acronym it stands for a whole nother level and obviously <laughs> whole is spelled wrong on purpose yeah, right yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> and another whole nother level whole nother level, whole no, whole nother level is a, a mantra a philosophy mm. a production team uh it, it and it's also an action so and i learned about this in in hooking up with him and, and the other cohorts grayson and Corey, and the extended circle of family there in arkansas i just on a side note i can't ever escape the state of arkansas all of the guys that play in project 86 are from Arkansas. Oh, wow. Most of the people that that worked on this record are from Arkansas, <laughs> and and you, you check those boxes, and then I have other extended friends, the Living Sacrifice guys, and yeah, yeah. Uh, dudes from A Plea for Purging, and uh, like I have so many, yeah, a lot of talent, musical connections <laughs> yeah. from Arkansas. But like anyone who doesn't know Arkansas, that's pretty random, right? You know? right. And the fact that that I'm from Southern California, it makes it even more random. <laughs> yeah. So H and L whole nother level <laughs> is something I learned about that Corey, Matt Grayson, uh, and Michael and Matt, uh, Marquez, all who played a huge role on this record. It's the idea of taking something, an idea, a concept, a song, or even individual parts of a song and maximizing their potential or self-actualizing the moment, basically. So when you say, yeah, when, when you say something like H and L, it's like, oh yeah, that is album worthy. That uh, that part, that idea, that song, it has been uh, optimized and 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 taken to the level it needs to be to get the appropriate reaction from the audience. So we're in southern Missouri. We're not too far from Arkansas, so we speak that language. I know exactly what you're <laughs> yeah. talking about. Yeah, because I mm -hmm. I use whole nother level as a verb, as an adjective, <laughs> right. as a noun. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it, it, it's multiple. Like if you were to look it up in the uh, Urban Dictionary or Webster's or something like that, you would see multiple definitions <laughs> below the term right. for sure. It's not just one thing. It's no. not just one part of speech. It's an attitude. <laughs> it's a way of life. It's a yeah. mantra, a yeah. philosophy. Yes. Yeah. A lot of my yoga sessions start that way. Start, start, start with H&L. Let's, H &L. H &L. Let's H &L. take this to totally. a whole nother yeah. level. H&L. <laughs> and, and I am sort of like an honorary H&L guy, you know, yeah. like 
I, yeah, I wasn't you... born H&L, but I've been <laughs> sort of annexed into the H&L family kind of thing. Always on permanent probation, though, because I sort of <laughs> exist in my own weird orbit, you know? Yeah. So, uh, but I, I'm proud to, to be a small part of the H&L, H&L world. The movement, yeah. It's like the... the uh, yeah, the movement. It's exactly. like your guy's version of like how Pantera has like CFH and then the song New Level. This is like the Arkansas, <laughs> and you're like the Phil from The Outsider. Yeah, like whole the H&L. Level. Yeah, a whole nother level. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm an outsider, but I'm still part of it. Yes. You know, as you're saying it, I'm sitting here thinking it could be a good thing or bad thing. Like, oh, man, you're taking it to a whole nother level, which can be a good thing. Yeah. But, you know, you have that crazy friend. You're like, man, he takes it to a whole (laughs) nother level. Right. (laughs) After midnight, he takes it to a whole nother level. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I mean, it could be applied to addictions, you know. Sure. uh, Yeah. Yeah. Anything, really. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to use it from here on out. Everything we ever do. Hashtag H&L. Hashtag. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so speaking of exactly. a whole nother level, how about this new album, Omni, man? This thing is Ooh. an absolute banger. Tell us about, and I know obviously you recorded down there with those Norma Jean guys. Tell us about Omni. There's a lot to tell, and, and hopefully I, I'm not too long-winded on this. I'll try to keep this as succinct as possible. From a sonic perspective, I kind of already laid out where the motivation came from, at least, again, musically. Uh, just wanted to do something darker, more ominous, uh, a little bit more dramatic, I guess, than what we've done in the past. There's definitely, at moments, a more cinematic-type quality to it. If I were to really boil it down, though, I just wanted to have as many moments on one movement of music or one album that give you chills. You don't just accomplish that by making heavy riffs or or choruses or moments on a song that people can chant or mosh along with. It's accomplished by ebb and flow and having a a tension there in, in the music. So as we were working on ideas for this thing, there were so many songs that didn't make the cut, not because they weren't really great ideas, but because they didn't have that vibe that I really wanted, which was, again, either it, it's dark and ominous, particularly. And the reasoning behind wanting to do something uh, darker, more ominous, heavier, is what's going on in the world. Right. Uh, what is emerging since 2018, 19 mm-hmm. is a dystopian hellscape <laughs> yeah, for sure. well, of, of, of technological innovation and isolation for us all um, that if it continues on the current trajectory of the kind of picture that I'm trying to paint here in this fictitious world of Omni, uh, will probably hit closer to home than, than many of us are probably in touch with or realize. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I wanted to take what was going on in the world and cast it forward, uh, just as so many great writers and uh, content creators and showrunners and authors have done in the past uh, in popular culture. Uh, I'm a huge fan of futurism of sci-fi, of dystopian content, of uh, dark uh, looking forward at humanity's uh, final chapter kind of thing. So I've been consuming that stuff for a very long time, and I wanted to attempt to put my own spin on that world, uh, call it cyberpunk, call it whatever you want, uh, and, and, and paint a picture of what could happen 20 years from now if everything that's going on in the world uh, is continued unabated. Uh, there's a lot more to it than that. And and to kind of, I don't know, give you the gist of it or give the audience the gist of it. I wanted to think of a world or what the world would look like if humanity achieves its ultimate goal through technology, which is the eradication of death itself for human beings and what that would look like and what the consequences would be and what that would what those consequences would communicate about human nature. So that's the gist of what Omni is about. Again, this is part one of a double album. I'm also working on a fiction book that goes along with it, uh, as well as uh, a visual album or an actual film that uh, uses part one of the double album as a score. So the score or the music 
the book and the visual content or the film are being put together as one essentially immersive experience. And this is part one of a double album. Do you think this is your most important work that you've done so far? I, you know, it's hard to say that um, and have people take it seriously because every time a band comes out with a new album, it's their most important work, <laughs> according right. to them. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. You know, that's what you have to say to yeah. hype and sell the record. You don't want to be like, I, uh, I average, check it out. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> but objectively speaking, considering what the world has gone through the last few years and how we're trying to hopefully scare people into a sense of objectivity and their evaluation and what's been going on in the world. Uh, it's hard to quantify this album in any other way but saying, yeah, I feel like this is the most important thing that we've done uh, because all of our other records have been so personal. Uh, granted, you know, we've talked about things in lyrics and in concepts that touch on, you know, the greater ongoings of, of the world around us this one is it, it hits really close to home for me uh and hopefully with other people as to what's been happening and it does sort of harken back to our third album truthful zeros in a sense it sort of inevitably or subconsciously became a part two to that uh, unintentionally but i just feel like it's a lot more quantifiable it's a lot more tangible and understandable you can really uh see how you know the goings on of 2019 2020 2021 2022 influenced uh everything that's being uh discussed on the album and and i wholeheartedly agree you know the way things are right now and i think times like this i think that's when art is at its most important when it steps up and it is the voice for some of the things that we can't say would you agree with that sentiment yeah, that's the ultimate uh, job of the artist in culture, in my opinion, historically, is to spark conversations, ask questions, and comment on things in a way that you can't in real life. And we really can't mm -hmm. right now. Uh, evidence of that, our second single and music video that we dropped uh, prior to the the uh, the the part one of the double album release on streaming. Uh, the music video contains some content uh, where I play a character that's basically an amalgam of every cliche of the evil uh, inventor scientists <laughs> that we've seen uh, over the years in popular culture, uh, messing with uh, nanobots and microscopic uh, uh, AI that can enter human beings and uh in this experiment that's being conducted he causes his subjects heart to explode um we've triggered the sensors on youtube and google uh with this music video because I, you know, honestly i don't think that they want us talking about that oh, wow. um, because it touch it touches on some things that have been going on in the world that nobody wants to see, at least in the mainstream culture, to even comment on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we feel a responsibility to speak into this stuff because, you know, human lives uh, are being affected by decisions of people in power. And, and, um, and we, I would feel irresponsible if some of this stuff didn't make it into the music and into the, the music videos and, 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 the communication that we're putting out into the world. So Andrew, um, I think I'd read that uh, a, a good portion of this album was actually crowdfunded um, uh, from your, from your fans and, and it's now being self-released. This got released on Friday. Um, can you kind of walk through how, how that worked for you and getting those, those crowd funds in? Yeah, obviously, you know, the whole Kickstarter thing has, kind of gone the way of the buffalo at this stage of the game but we're in a unique position as a band that we have some very deep relationships with with the the core fan base a couple few thousand people mm -hmm. that have followed the band for a very long time and those people were once college kids and high school kids they're now you know adult sure people are. who still still <laughs> yes. support us yeah yes, you know I feel that <laughs> yeah and uh so 
we're in a spot where probably, and this is based upon several album cycles now of experience, that we could do a few things that maybe other artists um, aren't in a position to do. And that's not to say that we're better or worse off. It's just unique to our fan base. Uh, this makes the most sense uh, in terms of a structure on how to set up the financing for an album cycle. And we've learned over the last, this is the fourth time we've done this, how to approach this thing that it's so that it's a win-win for everybody involved. And we have to give a, I have to give a huge shout out to both the people that have, have taken part in the pre-order process, which on a very long campaign here, that's like a year and a half and, and plus going, we have a pre-order campaign and then we have a Patreon that's both part of this process. A lot of peas in there. Um, <laughs> uh, without the Patreon, we, we wouldn't be able to make this thing happen uh, just on pre-orders alone, especially given the fact that inflation and uh, supply chain issues have pretty much doubled the, the cost of doing business on our sure. end mm -hmm. in terms of fulfillment of physical product, merchandise and, and vinyl and CDs and such. Uh, we have a Patreon community that's just uh, patreon.com slash P8625, uh, where a really vibrant family has sort of erupted over this time that we've been working together on this thing where people have actually taken a very active role in the shaping of what Omni has become. Uh, it's a very unique community uh, where I do two podcasts a week, but I also give everybody as much of a glance into the process of making things as possible, whether it's in studio content or looks at lyrics or speaking into everything that I can possibly you know, included in this process. There's unique musical content on there. There's demos. Uh, we have certain tiers who rename and give working titles to songs. Uh, there's all kinds of polls that we do. I mean, I can't even put into words how much content is on our Patreon. It's totally worth a look if you're a fan of the band. Uh, you can get on it at 10 bucks a month and there's literally, oh my gosh, I would say over a thousand hours now of content on there. Oh wow. That's cool. um, that it's been going for a couple of years. So the value of it keeps going up. And with that, like the, fans, all that, it, the fan yeah, feels like uh, they're definitely a part of the band. It's really more than an entertainment. It, it, it is, it is participatory in every way, shape and form. I don't know a lot of artists that are doing it on the level that we do it. And again, that's not to tout anything, but the, the depth of the relationships uh, here and the just the long suffering support of the people that are are our inner circle of fans. Mm -hmm. So, Andrew, is there a, any kind of uh, stress, or is it uh, more of a freedom with coming and and mm -hmm. kind of self releasing an album like this on, onto your fans? Do you feel any kind of pressure of, uh, oh God, is this going to be good enough? Or um, you know, you're kind of you, you're you're kind of in charge of it right now, right? Yeah. So. From a creative standpoint, the pressure is good because the motivation is just the desire to want to do right by everyone that has supported this band for so long and everyone that has stepped up to support us so vehemently on this album cycle. Uh, so it's a motivation. I wake up every day just saying, how can I stoke people out today? Mm -hmm. uh, and something I... You know, this is a, a sidebar, but probably something I would have mentioned, uh, I, I should have mentioned in answering the last question, is we even have a fan-driven alternate reality game that's been created oh, wow. uh, by about mm -hmm. eight members of the Patreon community that we're just soft launching now. Uh, the first people that are that will get a chance to participate in it are the Patreon people. They're kind of our test audience. And once we we work out the kinks a little bit right now in its beta phase. We're going to launch it to the greater fan base and the public, uh, hopefully in the next week or so as of this recording. Uh, and that's another testament to the fact that these people are going above and beyond to support the band. And when I say fan driven, I, you know, I've been a creative director for the thing only, like I haven't really, really participated in a ton of the content other than to just comment on it. 
So uh, it's crazy how much uh, these guys are doing. I want to give a big shout to the creative team behind uh, the Omni ARG. I'm probably saying too much about it right now. <laughs> oh, no such thing. The, yeah. <laughs> the, the immersive experience for the ARG uh, by even talking about it. But uh, it, it's going to be interesting. And what we have is a bunch of games and puzzles that people have to unlock to get more content and access to an actual Omni Corporation website uh, that feels very real. <laughs> and there's an employment application on there where people can actually uh, become uh, employees of the technocracy or the big tech company that takes over the world mm. uh, and be on the inside of the evil machine, so to speak, where uh, various... Uh, members of the higher ups who run the company, even the founders, uh, are there participating and guiding the ship. So it's it's a pretty interesting thing that's developing there. And again, driven solely, it was the idea of one guy in the Patreon community, and then we brought a bunch of others on board to help develop it, and then it's just been growing and growing. So hopefully that thing gets legs. Um, Back to your original question, though. Uh, HNL. HNL. <laughs> HNL. Uh, you know, doing this on our own, does it, is it pressure? Is it, is it uh, stressful? It, it can be when it gets down to the fulfillment side of things. Sure. And this is a pretty large scale campaign. Uh, but the way that I've approached every piece of this this puzzle that is this album cycle is I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I'm just going to do it. And I'm going to uh, throw this out to the fans and pray and uh, hope that everything gets taken care of. And so far that formula has been working. I had no idea how we were going to do these music videos. We've dropped three animated, well, they're hybrid animation, live action music videos. I always wanted to do animated content, never had the budget to do so. It's very expensive to do this type of work. And I threw this out to the Patreon community and one guy stepped up who happened to be in a position who works fairly high up in content creation for a major media company and basically said, you know, I want to help you do this thing. I have, I have connects, I have plugs, you know what I mean? Who can, who can help make this happen? And he eventually uh, was connected with uh, the director that's helping to do all the visual effects and animation sequences for this content that we're creating. And now we're making a film and uh, we haven't raised enough money for it yet, but we feel like we're going to, <laughs> so awesome. we're, we're still working on it. We've dropped three music videos. And if you're listening and you want to check those out, you can vi visit us on YouTube, just at project 86 video. And we're really proud of these three music videos for the first Three singles on Omni Part One, and that's Metatropolis, Zero is Greater Than One, and Virtual Signal. Uh, we're really stoked on these. And they are little pieces in and of themselves, or even teaser trailers of the bigger picture that will be the finished product that we'll release uh, at the end of this year. Very cool. And those songs yes. are absolutely murder. Wow. Love, yes. Yes. I love the new sound. I love... Uh... It seems like you drew from a lot of different influences this time around, and uh, yeah, just a great album, great singles. We're loving, we're loving Omni. Thank you guys, man. I mean, Thank we're you. really stoked on it, really proud of it. Uh, I am blown away by the reaction. I remember when I first started talking to Corey about this, and Corey and I became friends during the pandemic. Um, we just started talking more, found a lot of. Um, I don't know, common influence, I guess. <laughs> and, and a lot, we just have a lot in common creatively and professionally. So we just started talking more and more and more. And when it came time to start strategizing this record, I approached him and said, Hey, do you want to, do you want to hop on a song? And he said, why don't we write one together? And I was like, cool. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> and then that conversation led to, dude, I would love to do more. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, why don't I connect you with some of my people? And then, it turned into, all right, let's just do this thing together. Did you guys, because, wow. did yeah. you guys go to Arkansas? You know, or? <laughs> what's that? Did you head down to Arkansas? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I was explaining earlier. Yeah. I, I actually was in Arkansas for, oh, gosh, I'm going to say 20 days of the writing process spread out over several different trips. And you survived yeah, it. Collaborating, collaborating. And so, oh, it was an adventure, for sure. Yeah. It's very different from 
California. Orange County, California, <laughs> Arkansas. where I live. Big difference. Yeah. yeah, and then I think when we talked to Matt, he was actually um, telling us that he was working on it with you uh, back then. So we've been waiting for this for a while. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, again, I cannot stress how talented the group of people that worked on this thing are. And it's a pretty big team, a bigger team than I, I've ever worked with. Uh, there's... The squad down there in Arkansas. We've also got my boy Darren King, who's in uh, who's in Nashville, but is also originally from Arkansas. He plays uh, guitar and project. And he's also a producer. Uh, and then Bo Verschel, who's a SoCal dude like me from Orange County, same 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 scene, same group of friends. He he's in it, it, he he handled the mixing and the vocal production here. And uh, yeah, shout to him. Shout to Michael Palmquist. And uh, Grayson Stewart, Corey Brandon, and and uh, you know all the other names that I've mentioned. Well, wow, uh, big big team. While we're shouting people out, um, you know, uh, we talked about it a little bit ago, but the influences on this album, um, you know, it, it it's got genre galore on here. Um, if you don't mind, like, what kind of um, what kind of bands were you listening to to kind of draw that inspiration from? Yeah, it's funny. If you were to look at the playlist that I was sending to everybody that was working on this thing I i'm sure that they had conversations going <laughs> what in the world is this <laughs> because it, my conversation with everybody was i don't want to listen to anything that has anything to do with what we're trying to make so it's, it's so random everything from obscure dj down tempo electronic music to Nicki Minaj. There we go. <laughs> to, Shout out. It's just, it's just <laughs> so random if you were to see these playlists that I put together. It's like me and my And car. I just wanted to get everybody thinking outside of the box of just riffs. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, that's what every band does. They sit down to write something heavy and they're like, well, let's listen to these five bands that we really like. Right. And right. do some derivative form of the, the riffs that we're stoked on. I just wanted to, to do something that was different, you know, and I, I really put a ton of energy into pulling from film scores and visual media, mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer and Philip K. Dick and uh, anything that sounded ominous, but that wasn't metal. Right. Right. And then saying, let's do something that's super heavy pulling from this stuff mm -hmm. so great formula. <clears throat> great formula it, 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 it it's really hard to come up with something unique these days because if if if, if it you know if you pick a word or you pick a riff or you pick a part you know it's been done 50 times by 50 mm -hmm. other artists sure you know because yeah. there's there are so many artists out there there's someone making music right now in their living room uploading on youtube like it's everywhere. right <clears throat> exactly I would say mission accomplished on this. Yes, one hundred percent. Give the give it the clap. clap. I appreciate that, guys. Here it is. Here it is. I really, <laughs> I really ran everybody through the ringer that worked on this thing <laughs> and pushed them harder than they probably were comfortable with going. You pushed them to and a whole other level. <laughs> they probably didn't like me in, that much in the process, um, but everybody involved was such a pro. And so committed to making this thing everything it can be. And we're not done. I mean, sure. part two is coming down the pipe and we're working on that right now. Um, I'm putting Matt, Matt, Matt to work. Matt and I were just texting <laughs> the other day uh, about how fatigued we are creatively with everything and how we're kind of at the 11th hour and we got to push through that. Um, but he's been such a, a, a great sport about it all. And uh, Michael Palmquist as well. So I, I, I got to describe what's going on for part two of this thing. Uh, so initially, well, this is how I've been describing uh, as I've been talking to, to the media, to fans, uh, is in, in our album package, which obviously is not publicly released yet, we're still working on uh, uh, all, everything going into the physical product. But as a part of that, there's a, a logo piece that's a triangle. 
that's one part of the concept. And I view that triangle, it's like an equilateral, equilateral triangle, so equal uh, angles on each side um, at the top of that triangle is Omnipart one, which is the sound and the, the story uh, that's represented inside of it. And uh, either corner on the base of the triangle is an EP of music that sort of represents the polar ends of the sonic spectrum that were influential to making the sound. So on one side, you've got a brutality EP, which is just my band doing death metal basically mm, okay. Uh, okay like the heaviest stuff that we've ever that i've always wanted to do and, and never done because project has always been known as more of like a hard rock post hardcore thing rather than like uber death metal or doom metal but i have such an affinity for those sounds and it really just comes from me touring you know in my band touring with other artists or playing festivals where we're seeing you know uh, you know our peers playing music that's more aggressive than ours and me being jealous of how extreme it, it <laughs> is heavy yeah. So I'm, yeah and i'm just like that's so heavy i want to go that heavy you know i want to party so we we've been working on that and it is coming out so much cooler than what i imagined i was just in nashville and we tracked the first two songs vocally we tracked the drums as well and they're just coming out so good. And I posted a taste, like basically just a YouTube video or a live video, previewing what the work that we had done so far for our Patreon community. And uh, and this is for our upper, upper level tiers. I'm going to post it as well for our, our full community here shortly. But uh, just to get some feedback. And everybody was blown away by how good it was turning out myself included <laughs> it's not that <laughs> we didn't good. think yeah. it was going to be cool I'm but awesome. it's like you don't you don't know you don't know because you're trying something new so you know we've had these comments of people saying you need to start another band that's just this kind of stuff so i'm like oh my gosh okay yeah maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe so that's one ep and the other ep is a more we're calling it a digital EP, which kind of throws people off because they think that we're, go we're going to sound like Massive Attack or something, you know, or, you know, EDM or, or something. And that's not it at all. Uh, it's taking the core sound that people have known to be Project 86 and sort of pushing it a little bit more into the synthetic realm, specifically uh, with percussive elements. So I think people are going to be surprised by LP2 because... I think in the minds of the fan base, the way that we've built this is like, oh, that's fringe. It's not really my sound. It's not really what I'm into. I like the hard rock post hardcore thing that project has always done. But I think when people hear LP2, they're going to be really shocked and be like, oh shoot, this is really cool too. <laughs> so the goal is we want to make something that is as good or better than LP1. And I think we're on the way. It's going to be different but from the same universe. Pumped. Super excited yeah. for all that, man. Yeah. Sounds Ready. great. Ready for every bit. Hey, can we dig into the past just real quick? I know your time's limited. We'll let you get out of here, but we got to talk about a little bit of the past. Sure, man. 23 years ago last week, the release of Drawing Black Lines. I mean, does that seem like a lifetime ago? It does and it doesn't because time, like when you're in a touring band, you exist on a different plane of time space. And I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> you are trapped in this sort of loop, this Groundhog Day type loop when you're on tour. Oh, yeah. Where your real life is paused, your development as an individual adult is paused. And you close your eyes and wake up six weeks later or whatever and re-enter your life as if nothing happened. Well, you do that over and over and over again. And you also include the Groundhog, the Groundhog Day time loop of being in the studio. And you realize 20-some years go by and most of your time was spe spent in a black hole of sorts, right? Wow. Yeah. So you're still kind of the same person that you were when the band started. Uh, you're a little more grizzled, a little older, a little more bitter, 
<laughs> but uh, but yes. it, essentially that. just that same 20 year old kid that just wanted to put out a cd and be on the stage and so band dudes if they've been doing it on a professional career level for some period of time are a very unique species mm -hmm. because they're stunted in some ways uh emotionally and and uh uh, maturity wise, but in other ways, they are so much more experienced in the world than quote unquote normal people because they've had so many more transactions of meeting people and developing relationships and seeing the world. I, I, I don't know how to explain it other than to say you can never understand the, the road that I've walked unless you've lived it. So drawing black lines, it does uh, seem like a long time ago, but it also seems like yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very... Uh, Important record for the band. Very, very important record, it seems. I don't want to speak for people or overstate my own sort of creative significance, but it seems that it's had a lasting impact on quite a few people. Uh, I think to this day, it's a little. it was a little bit underexposed, a little bit underappreciated. If we had an actual management team and a marketing team and business team that was really behind it, it probably would have done a lot more as it stood, it was uh, supported by a handful of tours and limited marketing, and it still reached a lot of people. And I think it ended up being, rather than commercially as successful as it maybe could have been, it was definitely influential for yeah, a lot of people. And uh, again, I, I don't want to sound like I'm so awesome. I made something <laughs> that influenced a bunch of people. Well, I'm, we, I'm not, I'm we, trying we to can speak say it. We can. like, <laughs> I, I'm just trying to say this objectively, you know, without sounding like an arrogant douche. Like it, it seems like like people it affected people in a pretty meaningful way, and that was the goal. And I, I'm still in awe of it because there wasn't a ton of intention put into that record beyond we wanted to do something that was a little bit more energetic than our self-titled release, and that was a little bit H and L. <laughs> oh boy. Well, there I, it is there it is i can certainly verify that it's still influential i can still go back and listen to stein's theme i can listen to chimes and i still get goosebumps on chimes almost every time i hear it Great song. um just that records is is an absolute banger yeah and it is a, it is a uh an immediate listen it, it, it banger is the word that's what we were going for <laughs> even on some, even on the the slower tracks, um, with the the exception of Star, that was kind of the palate cleanser. Um, yeah, we really wanted to write bangers and and songs that translated well to the the live situation uh, that we could perform and really make the crowd uh, just go lose their minds. And uh, I think that that was achieved. You know, you mentioned getting chills when you listen to Chimes. That was the spirit I, I wanted to carry forward in Omni. I wanted people to get chills on every track. It's a totally different type of record, and I like that. Uh, but uh, that feeling of of just like whoa <laughs> is what <laughs> is what I wanted to give people, and uh, uh, that's really cool to hear you guys say that. Yeah, man. We're big fans, been big fans since I'm 16 years old. I remember the first time I saw Pipe Dream video was on G Rock, that yeah. show, the that old show. And we're, you know, we're from a small town area, so our our exposure to music wasn't, and especially like stream parts of music or stream music, we had to go to a bigger city to kind of catch any of that stuff. So to see something like Project 86 and that whole scene too, the Zayos and the Living Sacrifices and the Norma Jeans. The Cornerstone Kids. The Cornerstone and Tooth yeah. and Nail and Solid State is such a huge part of where we're at with metal now. And hopefully people appreciate that. Uh, and I know we certainly do over here at Vulgar Display, a podcast. Project 86 is very high on our list. So you might not be able to say it, but we can say it. Absolutely. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, guys. And, and, like, you know, it's such a weird – this is totally, like, personal and left turn in the conversation. But it's such a weird thing to hear people, I don't know, beyond appreciate, like, really into something that you made. I've always had such a strange, like – psychological relationship with the fan experience because on one hand <clears throat> i think there is an element of every guy that stands on that stage especially in heavy music that feels like oh i don't deserve that you know or or th there's just some disconnect there where you're lacking that uh i don't know what, what you call that like like uh ability to receive compliments yeah like you know yeah but uh, 
but on the other hand, there's that part of you, and it's kind of this simultaneous dichotomy thing, where without that like ego and arrogance, you can't get up there on that stage and do the thing that you need to do to inspire the people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's this you know simultaneous inter interplay between uh, deep devaluation of self and total narcissism and ego mm -hmm. um, that makes it possible to do this job and to connect with people. And I always I always tell everyone, you know, if you find an artist that's making, you know, alternative or extreme music in any sort of high level of quality, they're probably going to be not the most socially adjusted people because <laughs> in order to do this thing in an authentic way, it has to come from an authentic place. And it usually comes from some sort of place of personal uh, angst, pain, dissonance. Mm -hmm. uh, without those precursors and quirky elements to your personality, this, I mean, normal people just don't make this kind of music. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, we do know. That's why I love it. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> and normal people don't talk about this kind of. Yeah. Music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> a final plug, basically, for everybody who's listening. I appreciate you guys taking a moment and tuning in, and keep supporting what these guys do on the podcast. Great dudes, and uh, I just wanted to plug. You know, if you're interested in checking out more with the new music, uh, just visit us at project86.com. We've got a lot uh, going on surrounding this album cycle and much more content that we're going to drop along the way. Part two of the double album is coming later in the year. We've got more music videos coming. Uh, we've got the three music videos we already dropped. We've got the film. Uh, we've, we've got shows that are go we're going to be announcing soon uh, and just a lot of fun that will will carry us through the next eight, 12 to 18 months. So uh, yeah, just come be a part of things. And if you want to support, Go ahead and pre-order uh, anything on our on our uh, pre-order store, or visit us on Patreon. Again, I plug that uh, P eighty six two five. That's Patreon.com mm -hmm. slash P eighty six two five. If you want to, uh, you know, connect a little bit more closely with what's going on with with Omni, and uh, yeah, I appreciate all you guys and appreciate you three for for having me. Yes, okay. thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Before you get out of here, is there a plan to be back in Arkansas anytime soon? Uh, nothing specific on the books. We've been working kind of remotely on the content for LP2 and doing most of the recording in Nashville. Just a little bit different uh, process than than we approached LP1 with, but I, I think the, the output, output will be just as strong, like I said before. Um, I can't see a scenario, though, where I don't make it back there at some point. Uh, because uh, Matt and, and Corey and company are going to have a hard time getting rid of me. <laughs> I, I always, I always had a yeah. joke, joke when we were writing, like, I'm the least talented person in this room. And and they would, like, go, no, no, come on, dude. And I'm like, no, I mean it. I mean it. Like, I want to work with you guys forever. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Well, if you do oh, get good. back down there, we'd love to come even be a fly on the wall in the studio or something yes. if you'd ha it'd be open to having us. But uh, we are definitely going to go check out Omni out now and check out uh, the Patreon and everything else. Andrew, we appreciate your time, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Let's do it again anytime. Uh, the pleasure was all mine. And uh, yeah, well, I would be totally open to meeting up sometime with you dudes. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome, man. Yeah. Take care. All right. Take care.